This is crazy. This is my Buck Vanguard. I got this, I don't know, 15 years ago. Uh, before I was ordering stuff online, I, I phoned in my order via the Cabela's print catalog, and I've used it to process every single deer I've gotten since then, one way or another, whether it's field dressing or skinning it when I get home or, or both. And you can actually see, let me see, you can see there's scratches on both sides of the blade that run that way. That's from putting the knife in the pelvis of a deer and smashing it with either a log or a rock and breaking open pelvises. And yet, the last time I skinned a deer, I came back to my knife and the edge from here to here is gone. Little chunks have been eaten out of this. A mouse ate my knife. And I'm about to show you why I think that and what I'm gonna do about it coming up next on Twang and Bang. Anybody who's ever skinned a deer knows that your knife can get smeared with fat, a lot like a butter knife. And that's exactly what this looked like when I put it down on a shelf in my garage. Other than that, the blade wasn't even really dull, at least for skinning duties. I had simply finished and moved on to the fillet knives I used to cut the meat from the bone. And after that was done, I completely forgot to grab my Vanguard off the shelf. Four months later, I came across the knife when I was looking for something else and was shocked at what I saw. The blade was completely cleaned of any fat or blood with mouse droppings next to it. If that weren't incriminating enough, when you look closely at the edge, there's no rolling or chipping like you'd see from the damage you'd get during hard use. The edge was simply missing. There are stains on both sides where the fat and blood sat too long, but other than that, this knife was completely cleaned by a critter, and I think it managed to bite off pieces of the blade as it worked to get the bits of flavor out of the toothy edge. No worries, there's still plenty of good steel on this blade, and my work sharp will get me a new edge as long as I'm patient and don't overheat the steel. This is my work sharp Ken Onion Edition. It is a type of belt sharpening system, and I've got a bowl filled with water here because I'm gonna be grinding a bunch of this edge off, and in doing so, I just wanna make sure that I keep the, the blade cool, the edge cool, so between every single pass, I'm going to do a right pass and a left pass, I'm going to cool it off, dry it off, um, at least until I get that edge ground down. That way I reduce the damage I do to the temper itself just from the heat of grinding this. But you're going to see this thing is going to put an, a really nice edge on it very quickly w between using all the different belts I have for this. I'm also wearing safety glasses. Got this at a, at a slow speed, and I'm just gonna drag it twice. And cool it off. It's already looking better, and that's just three passes. The other thing I'm doing is I'm keeping the belt speed really low, so that reduces the amount of heat that this is generating. But it's still taking a good amount of that edge off with each pass. It's the patience of cooling the edge off every pass that will give me a better blade 
at the end of this. So it's worth the time. There we go. <laughs> that took quite amount of time. That was about a half an hour <laughs> of doing that back and forth, cooling the blade, doing it back and forth. But look at that. I've got a brand new knife out of it. Now I need to dress up that edge so it's nice and sharp. Now we're just going to go through the belts. WorkSharp has a sharpening guide and it recommends just two passes on this belt. Okay, we're gonna go with the next belt. This is the X65 belt, and we're gonna give this 10 passes. That's cool, that blade is cool, no worries. Okay, now we're gonna drop down one more belt to the X22. And this is also 10 passes. Okay, got one more belt. And this is a polishing belt. And it's thinner because they don't make an inch wide version. This is the size of the original Ken Onion, or the original WorkSharp. Uh, knife and tool sharpener belts. <laughs> it's a little trickier to deal with. And this could be another, this will be another 10 passes. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is super sharp. It catches the nail. Let's see what it does to paper. Look at that edge now. I did have to remove a lot of steel and because I worked hard to keep the blade cool during the grinding, it did take a bit longer than I initially expected. Ordinarily, a knife maker would grind the edge before final heat treatment so it can be done a lot faster than this. However, my patience means that I minimize the damage to the existing temper, which makes things easier for me overall. Okay, this is really old phone book paper. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. This is super sharp. It went from nasty to nice. It took me some time. That took about 45 minutes to get it all done. Um, but it was worth it because I saved myself my favorite knife. And this is going to hold an edge just fine. I'm not too worried about that temper or anything. It's pretty much back to new and it will be serving me well. I'll be sure to take it inside and clean it off rather than leave the fat all buttered over so that the mice eat it. Uh, I have a link to amazon.com. It's the lowest price I can find on a Worst Sharp Ken Onion Edition. And I also put my a link to my video review of this as well. So you can check that out in the video description. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang <laughs> and I hope to see you next time.